everybody welcome back to my channel happy saturday um today i am hopping on to talk about uh angor rat colors um i had mentioned a while ago that i was going to do a deep dive this summer into genetics and colors and all those things and it's almost the end of july and i have not done any of it because it's been a super busy summer um but i did have a one of you mentioned that you'd like to see what my rabbit colors are. So I thought I'd do just a quick video, um, a simple color video for you guys to show you the colors that I have and how I um, decide to put them together. Um, and yeah, so um, today was grooming day. I did six or seven rabbits this morning. So most of what you're going to see is cut fiber. Um, because we are, it's so hot and humid here right now that, um, as I've talked about before, also most of my rabbits spend, um, their summers with haircuts. Uh, I don't, I don't comb most of the time. I did, um, there was one that I did comb out today, um, only because she had been sheared down, I don't know, maybe a month ago and she just had some, um, around her her body and legs that I needed to comb out and so I just did that um, but all the rest of them were clipped this morning um, and two of them were um, two of my newer rabbits that um, had not had a haircut before so you'll get to see that for um, you can tell a little bit difference in like their first haircut um, it tends to be a little bit finer uh, or at least it does to me. Some of it gets, um, if you look at the babies, sometimes they have little um, pills at the end of their fiber um, tips. And I think I have a couple of those too that I can show you. Um, that's just brand new fur that's um, grown out and I just trimmed it off this morning. Um, so many years ago when I first started this journey, I sent all of my yarn to a boutique in New York City or in New York. Um, and um, she, the gal that owned this company, hired farmers like myself to get um, yarn from, her, from them. There were several of us that did it. And then she would take it and hire crocheters to make different projects and stuff. And that's how she had her business worked out. And when I did that, she had a very basic, um, because color ranges of Angoras are huge. That's why it's so overwhelming to me. And I feel like it's grown um, since, it, and it, it's probably because when I first started 20 years ago, the internet was brand new and there wasn't a lot of, things that you could see um, on there in regards to colors and how it worked and things like that. So um, I feel like the color ranges have grown over the years, but she had a very basic, and I couldn't find, I used to have a picture of her color chart um, hung up on my office wall so that, um, because when we sent all of our stuff to her, she wanted, I think she had six basic colors that she wanted her fiber broken into. So I would typically blend um, my fiber depending on what color the rabbit was. So all of my grays would go together, all of my whites would go together. Um, back in the day, I had some um, fawn or creamed colored rabbits, which I don't have today. Um, I don't have that color right now. And so she had um, black, chocolate, gray, both dark and light, because there is a difference, um, white, and I think fawn was her six main colors. And so everything that I made fell into one of those categories in yarn. Um, so I actually have four major colors in my, um, in my rabbitry right now. And they all, kind of fall together. Um, I am, um, most of my rabbits right now are either white or they are a chestnut color. And so those I blend all together. And I have an example of that. Um, I have two, I have one um, red Angora right now and she is a true red. And then I have my, some of you may remember her, she was my little, um, 
my little dough from my last batch of German Angoras. And I kind of thought she was a chocolate chestnut to begin with. And she has really turned red. And that's the thing with colors too. You have to kind of decide what their color is or, or um, because the colors do change as they get older. So you kind of decide when they're babies what color they are. Um, but it does change. And so I have two red colored ones um, that I'll show you that too. And with when you're talking about black angoras, they aren't actually, when they're born typically, they do look black. Um, as they get older though, it's the face that is black and the rest of their body is a pretty dark gray. So, um, and then there are gray um, rabbits also. But when, when they talk about a black rabbit, it's the face that's black and then the fiber is typically like a dark gray color. And so right now, surprisingly, that used to be a majority of what my rabbits were, was um, either a dark gray or light gray. And I don't have, I have one that would fall under that category if you were talking about um, spinning like I did without the six main colors. This would fall under a gray, but she's actually a blue steel color or a steel blue color. And so I don't have any true gray or blacks right now in my rabbitry. Um, and I'll try to um, do a video with my rabbits. Um, maybe I'll do pictures or something. I don't know. We'll see. If I'll do pictures of them and um, show you just what they look like on the rabbit. Today I'll show you what the fiber looks like off the rabbit though. Um, and so I have, let's see, two six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have 17 rabbits right now, I think 17 or 18. Um, and all of my colors go into four categories. Um, I have red eyed whites and blue eyed whites, and those are easy. They're just a white, um, white color. Let me show you this first. I'll show you the basket and then we'll go deeper into that. So this is what I got off my rabbits this morning and hopefully, is that gonna be true to color? Yeah, that's gonna be true to color. Um, so obviously when you talk about red-eyed whites or blue-eyed whites, they are a true white color. I've got a little bit of hay in these. Um, this was um, clipped off one, one of my new French Angoras, newer, she's, she's still pretty small. Um, they were born early this spring, February, March. Um, and so it is a true white color and this was all clipped um, and she actually has some really nice fiber. I'm really excited about it. This isn't necessarily um, the length that I usually like, but she really needed, well, she, let me show you this. This is a staple length. You can see where I've cut it here and that, I can get it. It's, it's really light. You can see Angora usually is um, pretty it's sticking to my hand. Um, pretty light, but oh, it doesn't take much to get this. It's super light when they're babies. Um, it does change a little bit. So that is from one of my French Angoras. And so white is just a true white color. And I have um, three, four, five whites right now, I think. And so that is a big portion. And I that was my goal this year was to get some more whites into um, my rabbits. White is a great color to dye and to work with. And so I wanted to be able to do that. Um, and so I do have those built up now. The other main um, rabbits that I have, and I think I have six, are the chestnut colors. And they range. Um, so I have... A couple of um, German chestnuts I have two and then um, I have one two three four four um, French chestnut rabbits um, and so they are let's see I can kind of divide this because I know which rabbit I did last this is off my German um, chestnut and that is a lot of gray with you can barely see there's a lot of tan in here, so that would be the chestnut color. And again, it does look different once you take it off the rabbits. Um, here's some more. 
This one's just a tad bit darker. I think you can see that on the video. And I did three chestnut um, anglers this morning, French and German. So here's a different one. So these are all off different rabbits, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to see that. Um, and so typically what I do is all of my chestnuts will go together and I will either spin them. Um, again, I spin either um, combed fiber or carded clipped fiber typically. And so all of my chestnut colors can all go together. So I have quite, let me see if I can bring this out without it blowing everywhere. I have these divided in this basket and it probably wasn't a great idea. Um, so this is all chestnut angora that I got off from three rabbits this morning. And so that is a good majority of my, my color that I get. Um, now my blue steel is, I only have one right now and she's actually my only real true gray um, angora rabbit. And so this is her, and she is the one that I combed. So I would take this and spin it just like this. Um, but that is her coloring. And I don't know if the blue will come through. When, when they talk about blue and lilac colored rabbits, it is, you can see um, the hue of the blue and the lilac when they're in the rabbits. And, and you can kind of see it. I can see it here. I don't know if it'll come through on the camera well, but this would be considered like a light gray. And um, so if I had other light gray rabbits, I would blend it with this and you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. Now, like I said, the only thing I really don't have right now is a black, I don't have any black Angoras at all right now. And um, those would come through as a really uh, much deeper gray than anything I have here, um, which is something maybe I need to get is a dark, dark gray rabbit. Um, so I don't have that color at all even to show you right now. Um, but my red is, this is what it looks like off the rabbit. And again, I always think it looks different off the rabbit than it does on, um, on the rabbits. It just has a different color to it. And I'm not sure, this is gonna come through, yeah, it's not really picking up the color good. This is gonna come through kind of as a fawn color. Let's see. So you can kind of see the red in there, but she is a true, um, there's a little knot right there, I'll just take that out. She is a true red and she's got some, she's got some crimp in her. Let's see if I can, I think you can see that. Um, and this is, again, she's in one of my newer ones um, that I just got recently. And so this was a fairly good staple length um, to get. And this is all her, this is her first grooming, um, first shearing. So she's, this is all baby, baby hair is what I would call it because it's so fine um, and crimpy. And I'm trying to find the little um, pills and I don't see any right here. Yeah, she's got a lot of, here's a lot of the red. Again, the camera's not picking up on it because of the sunlight coming through the window. But um, So those are the main colors I have right now. And I do have, I have one um, broken French Angora. And when they talk about broken colors, those are the ones that are very um, separate. And I'm gonna insert a picture here. because I took a picture of him. He um, doesn't need, he didn't need to be groomed. I had just sheared him down um, two weeks ago, I think it was, so he's really short. I didn't have to groom him, couldn't groom him because there's no fiber there. Um, but I will insert, in a, insert a picture here. And um, he is a broken Angora. And so that's where the color is very patchy in, in a very distinct area on its body. And you will see from the picture, um, when I groom him, he has some very white parts to him and he has some very um, chestnutty parts to him. What I typically end up doing with his fiber is I will blend it with my chestnut colored ones. Um, and so I can, and I will always card his because his, his is so 
um, distinctive that, it, and you could spin, you could spin it just the way it is. Um, there's no rules on that. Um, but I typically card his stuff with my chestnut and just blend it all together and I'll card it out. And then the, the colors get diluted as you card them. And so that's how I do his. Um, yeah. So I'm still, again, I'm still hoping to do a little diving into um, the color arena. Um, but like I said, the basic colors you've got are um, the black, the gray, the whites, the chestnuts, um, the blues, the lilacs. There are fawns. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the... And then, of course, you get into the rings on the backs of the rabbits, which... Um, what happens is when you either blow or just calm your or comb your backs of your rabbits down, you will actually see rings in them, and that's another color category that they look at um, for rabbits. Which again, once you card or comb all of that and then spin it, you don't see the variations. You kind of do on the yarn, but it's not um, super distinct there. So. I hope this quick little video was helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment box. Um, I hope to get a, a bigger video on this out eventually, maybe yet this year, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that just gives you a little bit of um, idea of what the colors of my rabbits are. And I'll try to do another video where I, I actually show you the rabbit and what comes off from them. Um, maybe I'll do some sample yarn and stuff and show you what the spun yarn looks like. Because even the spun yarn looks different um, once you take it from the fiber to, to spin it into yarn. It still looks different to me. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Please hit the like button and click the subscribe button if you don't already. And I hope you guys are having a great Saturday and I hope you're creating something. Thanks for stopping by.